The mid-90s in Russia, very exciting times uh, to transition after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And after Moscow, I was sent to Southeast Asia, to Myanmar as the deputy head of mission. After that, I went to a different continent and went to New York, uh, to our UN mission there. Very exciting time when we were in the Security Council. Mm -hmm. Um, after that, uh, I went as the deputy ambassador to Egypt wow. and then finally I had a big wish and that was to come to Ghana, to West Africa, because I had already, already uh, always a strong attachment to West Africa. I traveled this region uh, extensively uh, after my studies mm -hmm. in the late 80s and early 90s and I always had the wish to come back here. So I'm very happy to be here in Ghana since two and a half years and have the honor to uh, represent, my, represent my country here. Let's talk about the two countries. When we talk about mm -hmm. Germany and Ghana, what do we have in common as two nations? First of all, I would say um, we don't know enough about each other. If you look at the sheer numbers, we have about 30,000 Ghanaians living in Germany. This mm -hmm. is a sizable, um, vibrant community. But we have only about 1,500 people, uh, Germans uh, in, in Ghana. Here. In Ghana. Um, uh, out of 80 million uh, Germans, so that gives you an impression uh, how little most Germans actually know about Ghana, about Africa um, uh, in general. And I think um, this is something we have to uh, improve in the future. Um, <coughs> we are, in fact, neighbors, Europe and, and Africa, separated only by the Mediterranean, a couple of kilometers uh, in the Strait of uh, Gibraltar. Um, but we don't know uh, enough about uh, each other and it is one of my goals here during my time as ambassador to improve um, the knowledge also in Germany about Ghana and Africa by, for instance, bringing more Germans here to Ghana for studies, you know, for science, uh, also for investment, for job creation, things like that. I think this is very important. Now, there is this perception out there that um, Germans are quite cold towards Africans. I think that's a kind of uh, generalization, and, and I wouldn't subscribe to that in, in, in general terms, uh, that there is a uh, um, negative sentiment towards people uh, of African origin in, 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 in Germany. I mean, we have, of course, um, uh, many many people have the impression that Germans are a little bit on the on the on the pragmatic and, and a colder side. Mm -hmm. I know about these stereotypes, um, but it's not true. Actually, Germany is a very uh, multicultural and uh, cosmopolitan place. If you look at the cities like Berlin and uh, Hamburg and Düsseldorf and Frankfurt and Munich, you find, as I said, a very sizable uh, African community. Yeah. Among, among them, many Ghanaian uh, people. And um, they all live um, uh, life without any problem, yeah, I, uh, I would say. I speak to a lot of Ghanaian students who have been studying in mm -hmm. Germany, who came back and never ever I heard uh, about one incident uh, that they had nev negative uh, 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 impressions there in their contact with Germans. Having that said, um, Obviously, um, unfortunately, in Germany, like in many other countries around the world and in Europe, um, there is a problem of racism. Right. Um, we have to be clear and open about that. Um, I don't think that it is worse in Germany compared to other uh, European uh, countries, but it is still a problem, and each single case of racism is one case too much, and we are all called upon to work against this, and especially in Germany. Um, where we had in the last century our darkest hours, you know, when we had this fascist and murderous regime um, that led us into the Second World War. Um, so our credo in, in Germany is never again, and we are standing up against all forms of racism. And just to give you an example, a couple of weeks ago we had a big demonstration in Berlin for open and multicultural um, society and that brought about 250,000 people. Open and multicultural society. society. Society and that brought about 250,000 people, Germans, on the streets of Berlin. So almost every tenth Berliner was on the street um, to show their support, to demonstrate for an open and multicultural society. And I think this is worth mentioning. And so you think we are making progress when it comes to the issue of racism? I hope so. I hope so. On the, other, on the other hand, I see in Germany, as in many other countries, I see, of course, in the recent two or three years, I see a new wave of populism, nationalism, and uh, right-wing uh, political parties that play more or less on the uh, card also of, of, of uh, racist uh, stereotypes. And uh, this is something I personally, I personally take very seriously, and also the German government, the German society takes very seriously. And it's 
upon each and every person in Germany and in Europe to fight this on a daily on a daily basis. Now, this is not acceptable, and we have to make sure that history does not repeat itself. Right. So let's hope that history doesn't repeat itself. Now, moving on, let's talk about um, Germany as an European country mm -hmm. and also part of the EU. What is going to be the future for Africa in the issue of Brexit mm -hmm. and then some of the issues that are cropping up? Really, where lies the future for Africa? Mm -hmm. Obviously, quite a quite a big and, and difficult questions uh, question um, difficult uh, right now because we haven't seen yet the outcome of the Brexit negotiations. Um, you will have heard that um, obviously the EU and the uh, UK negotiators have just have just agreed um, on a, uh, on, a, on a text for 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 Brexit, and this yeah. text is right now deliberated in, in in London, and after that it will be deliberated uh, in, uh, in, um, in the European Parliament. Uh, so we have to wait uh, what's in there. Um, I personally uh, do regret mm -hmm. Brexit, the British decision to, to um, leave the European Union. I have strong doubts if this is, uh, if this is favorable for my British uh, friends, but it's their decision mm -hmm. and we have to respect it and uh, the time for regret is over. Um, what we have to do now is have to work both sides, the EU and mm -hmm. also uh, the UK, um, to find a mutually, mutually acceptable way um, for Brexit. And I think we are uh, in a good direction. And I think the main challenges are right now uh, in London to be overcome. Uh, what this all means for Africa is a question that uh, I would say the British colleagues have to answer first, because the relations between the European Union and Africa and the European Union and Ghana will, of course, not be affected by the British decision. So it's upon the British side now to define or redefine um, and their relationship um, with Ghana. Is Germany affected mm -hmm. by this move in any way? Of course, of course. Um, uh, the UK is one of our most important export markets right. uh, in, in the world here. If you think about uh, our car industry, mm -hmm. um, for instance, um, this will not be easy. It will be, as I said, Brexit will be detrimental um, to Germany, but it will be, I'm afraid, it will be more detrimental uh, to the um, UK, to our British friends here. And the task right now is um, to find, as I said, a mutual, mutually uh, agreeable terms uh, for Brexit that, <coughs> that uh, uh, leaves the door open uh, for a close and uh, friendly partnership. Are you looking at other opportunities already regarding economic stability? I don't think we have to look for other opportunities for uh, economic stability, but what is important to mention in this context is, of course, that we are trying to intensify our economic relations uh, with Africa, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, with West Africa and with a, uh, a special um, impetus also on, on Ghana. This is what we are, what we are working on. But this is complementary. It's not for replacing the okay. UK as a, as a, as a um, market. I ask this question mm -hmm. because we've seen the um, German Chancellor in Ghana recently mm -hmm. and where she announced that mm -hmm. there is going to be um, a car assembling mm -hmm. um, field in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So we're wondering if this could be one of the many mm -hmm. um, measures that you are taking to keep the, 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 the way your country is mm -hmm. going to be mm -hmm. affected. Yeah, I'm very happy about this decision of Volkswagen to um, start a car assembling here in, in Ghana. Ghana. I think this is very important um, also because it shows uh, to other global players, global business players, that Ghana is a place where you can come to and invest to. This is the most important message about uh, Volkswagen. If things go right, uh, I'm very optimistic that we can start, or Volkswagen can start the car assembling already at the end of this year. At the end or, of this year. Or uh, latest than early uh, next year, but there are still some questions that have to be solved here. But Let's move on to relations between the United States mm -hmm. and Germany. Um, how is it like? I mean, some people have the view that it is quite strained. Are you doing good as two countries? Mm, yeah, um, interesting question. <laughs> I must admit. Uh, let me maybe start by, by saying that uh, America, the US, uh, is uh, certainly still our most important partner outside of the European Union. We have a long-standing friendship and partnership uh, with the Americans. Uh, we are very grateful to the American people how they helped us in our darkest hours after 
the Second World War with the Marshall Plan. We are very grateful how they, they uh, helped us defend our freedom in the last century after uh, 1945. Um, and we are also very grateful to the American people how they supported us in the German reunification process in 89 and 90 because without the consent of the uh, American people we would never have been able to achieve uh, German unity. Having uh, said that, uh, it's obvious uh, that uh, with the new administration uh, in the White House and uh, the slogan America first, mm -hmm. Um, Germany has also um, to um, rebalance, let, it, let me put it that way, rebalance its strong partnership uh, with um, the US and this rebalancing means in essence that we uh, have to be stronger in Europe. So Is it Germany are, fast also? Not at all, not at all. We have never been in this category um, and we will never be in this category. We are strong believers in and supporters of uh, international cooperation and multilateralism because we are of the opinion that all uh, the pressing issues of the 21st century mm -hmm. like climate change and terrorism and financial crisis can only be solved uh, with international um, uh, cooperation um, here. That's why we want a stronger European Union and this is the right answer. Um, and, this, uh, and the other answer is that we have to look for new alliances with countries that are strong supporters of multilateralism. So this is the answer. But having said that, uh, I should also add that um, German-American relations are obviously not only government uh, relations. We have a strong, very strong cooperation and friendship also on the level of civil society. Mm -hmm. You will remember that in the last uh, century or 19th century, we had millions of Germany emigrating from Germany to the United States, so we have a sizable uh, part of the population in the U.S. that has German origins. Um, we have very strong cooperation in the fields of uh, culture and uh, science and, and, and arts, and this all makes our partnership and friendship unique, and as I said, um, the U.S. will still remain uh, Germany's most important partner outside of the European Union. Let's talk about illegal migration. This has become an issue of global interest. It is a very delicate issue um, for, for both sides and <clears throat> the situation as it is right now uh, where we have so many uh, people from Africa trying to uh, illegally uh, migrate, migrate uh, to the European Union is a situation uh, that is very bad for each and everybody, uh, especially for the people, for the migrants um, who pay thousands of euros or dollars to uh, go on this very dangerous journey through the yeah. Sahara, um, try to cross the Mediterranean, many of them lose their lives. Those who don't lose their lives might probably end up in some internation camps in Libya or wherever under very inhumane conditions. Uh, we have all heard about it. Um, this is a situation uh, that um, is outrageous. Yeah. Uh, we have to end it. We have to find ways in our government corporations, Africa and Europe, um, to come uh, to better management for migration. I mean, migration has been in the world uh, since uh, humans have been in the world. We have seen big waves of migrations in the last century, in the 19th century. Um, and it will be one of the major challenges of the 21st century, uh, certainly, and Africa, Europe um, will of course be uh, a, a, a very important um, theater for this uh, migration here. What we have to do, and this could be maybe the solution we could, we have to do more um, for what we call legal migration. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that more people from Africa mm -hmm. who want to study in Germany, mm -hmm. who want to work in Germany or in other European countries, are given the means and the ways to legally come to our countries, you know. And instead we have to try to diminish or reduce mm -hmm. the number of people who try to illegally come, um, in. come, come to Europe because this is a t situation um, that is really dangerous. A lot of European countries are calling for stiffer policies so that people are unable to enter their countries without the necessary documents. Um, do you think that this is a way that is going to cause so many people to begin to think that, okay, so African leaders are not mm. doing enough mm. in curbing the issue? Because that has more or less been the perception out there. 
It's a very complex issue, one of the most complex issues uh, you can imagine in international politics right now. So there is no one-size-fits-all solution and there's yeah. no easy solution. Of course, we have to understand that European countries want to make sure and want to have the control of who is crossing their the borders. borders. This is the right of each and every <coughs> sovereign um, state. Um, <coughs> and um, we also have to take into account um, the sentiments and the interests of the people living in, in Europe here. So open, opening up the borders mm -hmm. without any control, yeah. letting migrants in, cannot be the solution. I wouldn't go so far in saying that African governments are not cooperating enough. Uh, um, we, are cooperating, we are cooperating quite uh, well, for instance, with the Ghanaian government on the issue of uh, migration and illegal um, uh, migration. Um, but as I said, I think we have to think bolder mm -hmm. and we have to come uh, to better uh, forms of cooperation to manage migration. But because it's obvious, you know, in the in the, in the aging European countries, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. within the next 10, 20, 30 years, um, we need additional young people mm -hmm. for our workforce. Right. On the other hand, you have demographic <coughs> development in most African countries, countries. you know, that uh, the, the gains in populations is literally eating away mm -hmm. what you have in economic production surplus. You know. so, from a very theoretical point of view, the solution could be quite easy. Yeah. We have to think, we have to think border. Um, of course, securing the borders alone will not solve the problem. What could be a more promising concept, of course, is that we, from the European countries, we try to invest more in Africa. Invest in Africa to, um, to uh, produce jobs. Yeah. And to give young people in the, Africa the opportunity to also have a fulfilling and prosperous life here in Africa. All so right. that is certainly a very important keystone. Okay, let's talk about some, the areas mm. of cooperation between mm. Ghana and Germany. How are we doing? Mm. What are the things we're doing together? Yeah, we have a very vibrant uh, friendship and partnership, uh, Ghana and Germany, since uh, 60 year, 61 years 61 now. 61 years, 61 yes. years now. Last year we, we celebrated 60 <laughs> years with yes. a big uh, party at Goethe Institute. <laughs> Um, it's a very uh, strong partnership uh, based on the same values of democracy and, and human rights and multilateral cooperation. Um, and I'm happy to say that uh, the german ghanaian partnership is probably stronger than ever. Um, we had the German Chancellor, uh, Angela Merkel, Merkel, here uh, in August. We had the German President Steinmeier in uh, December 2017 here for a state visit. President Akufo-Addo was in Berlin already three or maybe four times uh, in the last two years. Um, so this is quite impressive. I would say we have a very trustful and close dialogue on the political uh, level. And we have identified Ghana um, as one of our priority partner countries mm -hmm. uh, in Africa. And what we want to build uh, with Ghana is a partnership, a real partnership for the future. It's about investment, it's about jobs, it's about job training, vocational training, renewable energy. Um, so these are the main pillars. Mm -hmm. um, and this new partnership for the future could also serve as a showcase or a model for other African countries. So we have education. I know you are very passionate mm -hmm. about education. The two countries are coordinating the areas of education. The special vocational training. Special vocational training. Yes. How are we doing mm. that yes, issue? Yes, we, we, we are trying to bring some of our German experiences. Um, Beautiful. And, and also knowledge né, to, um, to our Ghanaian partners here. Because we think that the, the, that the German uh, dual vocational training is mm -hmm. quite unique. It combines the theory mm -hmm. and it combines the practice. You know, because uh, if you have only academic education, you, know, you will never be able to um, modernize or industrialize a country. I mean, I'm a lawyer myself, but only with doctors or lawyers you cannot modernize and build a, a country. Right. You need also the engineers, you need the carpenter, you need yeah. the painter, you mm -hmm. need the car mechanic, mm -hmm. all these kinds. And this is the kind of uh, vocational training we would, uh, or we are pursuing um, uh, with our Ghanaian partners here. We have a strong partnership with the Ghanaian government on this. Um, the volume of our vocational training cooperation is about 30 million euros right now, and uh, we are looking at intensifying um, our cooperation here. And I'm quite uh, optimistic that this might be one of the um, building stones for a prosperous future of Ghana.
Thank you very much for talking to us. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate it. We are very, Thank very you grateful. Very Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you lot. very much. Okay. All right, so Good. this has been the interview yeah. segment on Diplomatic Affairs. We've taken a break. When we come back, the show continues. The 28th anniversary of the German reunification took place at the German ambassador's residence.